Welcome back to a new one on this channel. In this occasion, we need to talk about the shapers. If you go to the modulators, you can see something that says shaper and then something that says shaper MIDI. I'm going to show you both. So first, I'm going to go to shaper MIDI. And it says MIDI because when you play a key, and I'm using a keyboard right now, of course, it's going to recognize the MIDI and it will run whatever waveform that we designed right here. And this will need to, to go and modulate something else. How can you assign it? Well, right here you see the map. You just need to click it. When you click it, it's going to start blinking. And then you, meet, you need to go maybe to your synthesizer or, or whatever other device that you're using. And you just click the source that you want to modulate. In this case, I'm going to use frequency. So once I click it, you can see that you have a dot. And now if I press a key, it will run this modulation and modulate the frequency. That's how it works. Now, when you use a shaper MIDI, uh, you have multiple uh, modulations. You can run multiple ones. In this case, you have just one. Well, you can maybe map this one, go to the resonance. I'm going to do the same. Go here, go to shape. And now if I play a key, it will mod modulate all three at once. If you want to delete a modulation, you just need to go here, click the X, and it will delete it. If you go back to the main one, when you're using the first, you can delete it from here. Now, in this case, I kind of need a modulation. I'm going to map it to the frequency. And if I play it, it's going to modulate the frequency. Now, you can see something here that says mod or it says remote. I will show you the difference in a minute. Now, of course, what we want to do right here is to use whatever shape that we have uh, in the center and use it to modulate something. By default, at the bottom, you have some templates. So you can use the templates if you must. You can. But the most important part, and if you want to delete it, you click the X, is that you can draw your own custom shapes. And you, the only thing you need to do is just to, you need to click and uh, add the point, and it will go and add the point. And by default, it's uh, snapping to the grid that we have right here at the back. And uh, that's, again, how it works. If you want to remove a point, you just need to hold the shift and click the point. And if you want to adjust a curve, you need to hold Alt or Command and notice that it changes, the icon changes. Well, then you can adjust the curve. Maybe I'm going to go here and adjust the curve there. So that's what you can do with this. Now, by default, again, it's going to snap to the grid. Maybe you don't want this. Well, if you don't want this, you can go here at the bottom, disable the snap, and now you can freely move the points. Notice it's not snapping. And if you do want to snap, you can go up to 16 on the grid. And it will, of course, you have a lot more to snap too. Another thing that you have right here at the bottom is the random. So if you want to generate a random motion, it will do it for you. Now notice that this only triggers when I play a key. And you can see the yellow lights right here. This is when I'm playing a key. So it will only fire when we play a key. So uh, I'm going to do something a little bit more simple like this. So the rate and the depth, they really matter. If the rate is uh, right here, one four, I can go up and notice that the it's going to be slower. And you can see the shape right here. So the rate really matters. It doesn't matter if you're triggering uh, every, the, the uh, waveform once or multiple times. You make it faster, it's going to be thinner. And if you make it wider, it's going to be very long. You can, uh, of course, sync this. Uh, is your, you're syncing to the tempo of your DAW, or you can use milliseconds. I'm going to go to sync, and maybe I'm going to do something like that. So then you have the depth, and the depth is the intensity of the modulation. Right now, on 100%, it means that it will do whatever is that it's going on right here. But maybe you want to go a little bit less aggressive. You go down on the depth. You don't need to modulate to change uh, the waveform that you created. You just go down on the depth or you go up and I'm going to go all the way up for now. So like I said before, I play a key and it will trigger. So you have the loop and the loop will make this uh, work uh, as an LFO. So now if I play a key and I just sustain it and I'm holding the key, you can see it right here, it will loop the waveform. So now the rate of course will alter how fast it goes. Maybe I'm going to do something like that. There we go. And if I want to go faster, I can go down and just make it go faster. And everything else that we did, of course, matters. If we alter the waveform, it will alter the modulation. 
including the depth, of course. Alright, so that's how it works on loop mode. I'm gonna go back to the default one. Before we talk about the rest of the options, because they're really cool, I need to show you what the mod does, because it's super important. When you are on mod, you can see a plus and a minus and then 50%. Now I'm going to be going to the frequency and I'm going to put it maybe right here at 50%. So we are using this waveform and I play it and I'm going to disable the loop. Now if I play a key now, you're going to see that it goes or starts from below the center point of the frequency and then it goes up, right? It goes above. So this is because this is plus and minus and it means that it's bipolar. It's going to go into positives and to negatives. So I can click it and when I click it, notice that this goes here, right? We, uh, we uh, see the uh, line right here on fill. So now when I play it, it will start from whatever point that you select and then go up and down running the modulation. So now it's unipolar. Still, right here, this uh, option, it says 50%. I can go to 100%. Notice that now it's a bit more aggressive. It's going to 100%. So this is like the intensity. If I go down to maybe, I don't know, something like 10%. Notice it's just not a lot. It's the same thing for the uh, bipolar. Just a tiny little bit. If I want to do more, I can go up and it will be more intense, but now it's bipolar. Positives and negatives, and then unipolar. I'm gonna be putting this right here, so we know that it's at 50%, the frequency, you know, right here at center. When I click on this one, it's gonna to go to remote. And the first thing that you need to notice is that the control, it's grayed out. And this is because we don't handle the modulation, uh, or the frequency modulation in this case, uh, with the other controls. It doesn't care the position of the frequency. If I go to mod, it means that it will run it from 0 to 100, from 0 to 100. So it's going all the way up and all the way down, pretty much. So with this one, it, again, it doesn't care the real position of the frequency. It's going to go from maybe 30%, and then it will go to, I don't know, 50. So it's going to start here around 30%, and it will go to max 50%. And this is why this is the minimum, and this is the maximum. That's the difference between the uh, mod and the remote. With this one, you can again select the start and the ending. And with the other ones, you can choose the intensity and if it's uni or bipolar. That's all. If you go to the multi map, you can see that all the options, if I map maybe something else just to show you, uh, you can use different modes for the different uh, maps. All right, so let's talk about the extras. You see velocity, offset, then we have echo time, and then jitter and smooth. The velocity, it means velocity. Right now, if I play soft, it will run the same modulation. You know what? I'm going to make it uni, uh, so it's just a little bit more obvious. If I play soft, it's going to do that. If I play hard, it will do the same. So it's the same modulation. It doesn't care about the velocity. So if this on this one, I go to 100%, whatever velocity, um, playing the keys, you know, the velocity of whatever it is that you're using, maybe a MIDI clip, will alter the modulation. I play soft, the modulation is soft. If I play hard, the modulation is full. So your velocity now will influence the modulation. This is what this uh, control means. 100%, it means 100%, but you know, maybe it's just way too aggressive. You can go to maybe 30. And even if I play super hard, modulation will not go to 100%. Now I'm going to go all the way down and now we need to talk about the offset. I'm going to keep the velocity all the way down to zero. Now the offset, what it will do, it will just go to negatives and notice that we have the peak and then the bottom part. So we can go into negatives and we can go into positives. If I double click, it's going to go back to center. And I'm going to go to loop so we can see it on the, uh, you know, on the display. If I go down, what it does, it's going to push this to the center point. So now the peaks will align with the center. If I go to the other way, it's going to do the same, but with the bottom part of the modulation of the waveform. So if I go up, it's going to push it up, push it up. And at some point, the peak is going to get chopped or the upper part of the modulation is going to get chopped. 
And of course, we have a different type of modulation. It works differently. Now you can map this and modulate it with something else and maybe move it up and down and you will be getting a more random type of modulation. Right, again, double click and double click and go back to zero. Then you have jitter and this one's noise. It's almost like noise. So if I play and remember I'm looping, I'm gonna go maybe a little bit slower. There we go. I'm gonna go up on the jitter and you will see that it's gonna start to like getting that randomness and it's because behind the scenes this is where this is using noise and it will create kind of a random motion so it will give you a little bit of randomness and it uses noise because noise is an unpredictable source if I go all the way up it's, it looks pretty noisy so but if, you know if you go if I go to 10 or maybe 7 or 8 it's just gonna be a tiny little bit so if you want a little bit of randomness jitter is a very cool option I'm gonna go all the way down and then you have the smooth and the smooth what it will do it will smooth the peaks and corners if I go up notice that the peak right now the sharp edge it's uh, smooth there we go so it doesn't matter what you create right here if you have something super sharp it will smooth it out maybe I'm gonna go to this one you have a lot of peaks I'm gonna go there go up and it will smooth everything up there you go cool so this is what you know these controls will do and they are super useful because maybe you have something super simple like this and if you want to create something a little bit more unique you have of course these options to create something else cool now then you have the echo and the time and to show you this one i'm gonna disable the loop so this means that if i play a key it will run only one time and i have the offset there you go much better i'm gonna go down so when i play it it will only run one time the echo it will it's like a delay but a delay for the midi so it will repeat the shape while going down on intensity and i'm gonna maybe go faster there you go I'm gonna go to echo maybe 10 or 15 percent. If I play it, is that we have an echo right there? If I go more a little bit more aggressively, it will create that echo. Now the time it's super important. Right now it's 100 milliseconds, which is super fast. So if I create a lot of echo, it's gonna create that you no know, delay or echo, but it's super fast. I can make it slower. And now we have that. could even make it uh, slower I remember that maybe going a little bit of an echo 40 maybe 30 something like that it will be just a tiny little bit if you go all the way up on the echo and you play it it will keep playing all right so it's uh, just gonna keep playing it's like enabling the loop but you know if I change the time while it, this is going is going to affect the time so you can maybe modulate this and get a cool modulation still again if i go down an echo maybe to 50s and i put it super fast it's going to be pretty fast right so this is what the echo can do and uh just like this we just covered everything on this shaper so then you have the shaper not midi this one so what's the you know what's the difference so first of all this shaper midi it says midi because it will react to midi the other one the other shaper cannot be uh, in front of an instrument or maybe a midi uh, type of instrument because it cannot react to, to midi it works almost like an lfo it's actually an lfo so i need to drag it maybe at the end of whatever it is that you're trying to modulate and this one notice that it goes in key and keeps going so it works like an lfo I'm gonna go maybe to this one and I'm gonna delete it. There you go. And I'm gonna go to this one. And notice that most of the controls are completely the same, right? So we can still, you know, create our own waveform. We have the map. We can map it to something. We can go here. So, you know, everything just lo looks pretty much the same. And it's because it works the same way. The only difference is right here. 
So for now, I'm just going to go to the basic, you know, first waveform. And I'm going to map this to something. I can still go to frequency and map it. But the thing is that now it's going up and down because it's an LFO. Or in this case, is a loop. So when I play a key, it will just, you know, not listen to my MIDI, but it will still modulate the filter. But it doesn't care about MIDI, right? So, okay, so right there at the bottom, you have the most common controls, because again, this is a LFO. You can go faster or slower, depending on the rate. If you're uh, syncing to your DAW tempo, you can go in Hertz if you must. Super slow. I'm gonna maybe sync it and do something like that. Then you have the depth, just like the other control to control the intensity, like the other MIDI shaper or shaper MIDI. And you control the intensity. Cool. If I go maybe slower at the top, maybe slower, at the top you have the jitter, just like the other one. And you get that noisy type of waveform. You can use the smooth and you have the same, you know, same thing that before. And then you have the offset, which is again, it works just like the other modulator. So, so far, it works exactly the same. The only difference is, uh, is a pretty much an LFO. But then we do have some differences because uh, this one doesn't react to MIDI. So we need a way to trigger or maybe restart the envelope or whatever. So you can see the R and this one is a re-trigger and it only works when you are hurt. So if I'm playing something, I'm playing a key and holding it, I can click this one and it will re-trigger the whatever waveform we are using there. All right, so this is why you use it. You manually re-trigger it. On loop mode, it's like an LFO, we know this. But I can go to one shot. If I play a key, it will not do anything. Why it's not doing anything? Well, because again, this doesn't react to MIDI. You need a way to trigger this. So if I go here, it doesn't. But if you go here at the bottom, you can see the T and this is trigger. So this one will react when you manually trigger this button. And maybe you're thinking, okay, so what, are we going to use this and then manually trigger with the mouse? No, well, this one reacts to automation. So you can go to a new automation lane and I'm going to maybe show it right now. If I play a key and hold it and I play, notice that it goes on. So now the uh, automation lane is triggering the uh, trigger. So, you know, you can use it the, this way. Or maybe you can map this to a, maybe a different controller, a controller that you have at home and you can map it to that if you want. And the manual, notice it's all the way open. Well, it's because this one will just sweep whatever waveform you created right here, and it will run that modulation, but you do it manually. And it's the same thing we did before with the automation lane. How can you control this manual? Well, maybe you can map something else, a different telefo to the manual and control that way. But you know, you can use your automation lane to run the modulation. And okay, so that is it. If you liked all of this and you learned something new, remember to like and subscribe.